So I get a lot of people asking me every day how to break into consulting in a big four firm, whether you're a student or a professional with a couple of years of experience. But from my experience, you think too much about breaking into the industry, but not a lot about which consulting firm should you choose. Should you choose PwC, Deloitte, KPMG, EY? You have to think about it because all those firms are not all equal. For example, if you want amazing colleagues, well, you could work for PwC. If you want, let's say, to work 24 seven and have no life outside of work, you could work at Deloitte. Whoa, 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 hold on there. Are you saying that PwC is better than Deloitte? We asked everyone on their assumptions on what it's like working for PwC versus Deloitte. And we covered things from work-life balance, career progression, and just the colleagues that you work with. Today, we are answering your assumptions on what it's really like working there, me based on Deloitte and Mahidi based on PwC. And believe it or not, we had some really crazy assumptions that come through. One of them was even, do fit girls work at PwC? And you know what? Uh, I mean, sorry, boys. I don't think that's true. What do you think, Mahidi? Well, PwC are pretty big in like fitness and like events that way. So I think you're right. But I heard that Deloitte consultants really like to make fun of KPMG and that's not really nice of you. Wait, wait. I think everyone makes fun of KPMG. But wait, I'm joking, by the way, KPMG, before you put me on your blacklist. <laughs> So the first assumption that we heard was that actually PwC only accept graduate roles from Russell Universities. Is that true, Mahidi? So it's funny that you say that because from my experience, people who say that are the ones who didn't get the job and then they're just trying to find excuses, okay? I don't know from about the UK, but here in Montreal, yes, PwC, they go at like top schools to do their career fairs and everything else, but you can, you can break into consulting at PwC if you come from another, if you use like creativity, if you reach out to people. So you don't have to wait for them to come at your school to do the career fair to get a job. But yes, I would say that it's easier if you come from a top school. That's so weird because here in the UK, I think it's quite like unbiased. You can apply based off any university that you go to. But I do think sometimes they do have quotas for certain universities that they do prefer, but they definitely have like a quota for anything other that doesn't sit in those universities. So we definitely still have a chance here in the UK as well. Your firms don't go to just top schools to do like their career fairs and everything else. Okay. That's nice to know. Yeah, yeah. So you guys in Canada, you can just move to the UK then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come over, come over. Okay, my turn then. So I heard that the Deloitte, the hiring process is super long. So you have a phone interview, you have a face-to-face, -face, then another face-to-face, -face, then a case interview. The process is so long that Deloitte can just ghost you in the middle of the hiring process. Is that true? So I think that basically my process was quite old. So I ended up also doing all of that and a presentation and obviously, you know, the face-to-face -face with another person as well in that as well but it's really changed this year so you kind of just like you know have one virtual interview and then you kind of skip to the assessment center where you end up you know essentially just doing a face-to-face -face interview and maybe even a group exercise based on what part of consulting you're applying to but i mean every team is different no matter where you are in the world and the teams are so big that they're looking after like thousands and thousands of people so I think every single, you know, for big four firm and even MBB definitely does ghost some people. I definitely was ghosted for a bit, but then I, I think once I came to the first interview, the process was super quick and I heard back like in five days if I actually got it or not. It's so not too bad, I don't think. So before we skip to the uh, next element, I want to ask you, is it true that it's hard to break into Deloitte if you're an engineer? So I actually study physics and I am basically, well, I think I'm an engineer and I still got in. So no, I actually think they value engineers and people from STEM uni university or what they studied there purely because that, you know, we do think a little bit more logically. It's kind of inherent because we're problem solving all the time. So no, that is false, everyone, false. I, got, I, I get this question quite a lot. Uh, and even at PwC, most of my colleagues are not business graduates, they're engineers. I think big four firms love engineers just because, just like you said, of uh, how they think, their mindset and their problem solving skills, because I think you need that in consulting anyway, so. Yeah, 100%, I completely agree. Loads of pol internal politics. That's what I've heard from PwC. And that's an assumption that someone sent in. That they've heard that, you know, it's lots of internal politics that people are backstabbing each other. It's a really toxic work culture. And there's also like a little bit of a battle between strategy and, and PwC. Can you tell us more, you know, is it difficult to get onto some of those projects um, and choose 
which ones you want to go on to next. Okay, let's let's tackle one point at a, at a time. <laughs> okay, so from my experience, I had amazing colleagues and a nice department. Everyone was nice and everything else. So they really helped me and I really enjoyed my work because of them. So I won't say that PwC has a toxic culture. However, after a couple of months or like years of experience, and then when I quit PwC for DXC, what I heard is that it changed a little bit uh, like people started like backstabbing each other. Uh, sometimes when you ask too much questions, people would say like, hey, stop, like I'm just busy, let, let me just work, you know? Uh, they're less responsive, let's say. Uh, and I think that when you don't have a lot of projects, everyone is like fighting for it to be uh, staffed in a project. And this is where uh, toxic culture can uh, grow. But from my experience, when I started, we had plenty of projects. Um, and so I didn't really have that. Now, do you choose the projects you're in? You said that you you have the capacity to choose your projects at Deloitte. I don't think it's the same at PwC. Your manager chooses. Even when you start like as an associate, as a junior consultant, you never really choose your project. They just tell you on Monday morning, hey, you're on that project, let's go. And then you have to do it, that's it. And that's super, super different to Deloitte because I think from day one, your first project, you may be given it, but then actually, you know, you're probably given it, but then from then you're kind of on your own and it's better if you find them yourselves, other th otherwise you get the really shit projects. Yeah, I heard the same with at firms like BCG and McKinsey, like you're on your own and you have to find your own projects and reach out to your colleagues and everything. But at PwC, I never saw that. And that's super interesting. I'm pretty curious. and. This is just my own personal assumption and question I want to know. Mm -hmm. Is it really difficult to transfer from one line to another at PwC? So for example, like strategy and to let's say economic consulting in PwC. That's interesting. Uh, no, it's uh, kind of easy from my experience. So I had a lot of people from accounting coming to consulting pretty easily. What you need is really to network. You have to go to PwC events. You have to meet people, right? Because by having those conversations, you can spot that, okay, they need someone in that department or they need that kind of skills. And so if you have that skill, if you have the time to work in, like you can really, really ask people like, hey, can I join like your department? And then the HR process and everything else is kind of easy. You really just have to meet people to know about those opportunities because PwC will never send an email saying, hey, we need someone in that department if someone wants to switch. No, it never happens that way. Oh, wow. Okay, that's actually quite similar to Deloitte, I think in some way that actually we have to really network to be able to try out different projects in different areas. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it, it's always about, you know, who you know rather than what you know some of the time yeah. to try on some of the, you know, those really cool projects you want to go on to. Okay, so I have one for you. Is it true that Deloitte is a super competitive firm? Like everyone wants to like be the best and sometimes it can be maybe detrimental to your department or your colleagues? I think this is the one thing that really makes Deloitte different to a lot of the big four firms and even to some of the MBB firms. Mm -hmm. I do think that Deloitte is super, super entrepreneurial. I don't see that as a bad thing. I don't think it's detrimental. Actually, it encourages us to, you know, try and find our new projects. We kind of get told that you should be doing practice or extracurricular activities on the side to kind of help you jump onto some of the other projects or other areas you're interested in. When you're surrounded by really hungry people or people that, you know, do are a little bit competitive. You either take it in a way where you help it to push yourself and become even better and grow faster, or you kind of get lost in the back and you kind of don't compete with other people or you're probably not pushing yourself as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. So I just guess it depends what type of person you are and if you can fit in that environment. It's not toxic and it's not like people don't care about you, but you can definitely tell who is better than other people based on some of the stuff they do on the side of the extra work they do as well, for sure. Yeah, I think you're right. At PwC, it's pretty chill. We're like relaxed, but okay. when someone is super competitive, we can see it right away. Like I knew a guy, he was all over the place at PwC. He was helping in all the departments, even though he was in IT consulting, he was doing everything. He was organizing the events and we were like, damn, like, Chill, bro. <laughs> but, <laughs> but really that sounds like me. I am such a keynote that actually sounds like me. God, I must be the awkward person in the office, which everyone hates. <laughs> oh, really? Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> but when you're super competitive at PwC, I feel that you get promoted faster. So that's a perk. But in general, everyone is pretty chill. Like I feel that Deloitte, that entrepreneurial mind that you talk about, I, I feel it uh, when I talk with Deloitte uh, employees, so it's cool. Okay, so since it's all entrepreneurial and you're all competitive and everything, so do you guys have 
office parties, events? I wish we did. I mean, we always see on like creative management consultants or like consulting humor, they always like talk about office parties. I really wish we did, but we only have like one consulting wide party, which is our Christmas party. Okay. And then sometimes we have like socials with our teams and stuff, but nothing like too crazy that you see on like Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> I wish though. It always is a bit different. We have like one or two events per month. It's kind of great to meet people and just to chill. I told you, like we're chill people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it sounds really cool. I think we obviously have industry events and like um, team socials, but nothing firm wide or no like massive office parties. Okay. Okay, and last thing, how about international flights? Since you have a lot of projects, do you move a lot or? So I think it's really dependent on which country you're in. Um, so our clients are, are like are either in the UK or like EMEA. So we get to travel based on the client and where the headquarters are. And I, get, I think in America, like it's very different because everything is so far from each other. You have to fly, to, you know, to even be, to go from like one state to another sometimes. Whereas in the UK, we kind of just train it and we can come home to our own places at the end of the day or at the end of the night. Or sometimes we just have to stay in hotels. But there's not as much international travel like all the way around the world, purely because we have offices with people who work in those offices who can do that. So why would you pay for people to fly all the way over when you have people working in those offices? It's a waste of cost for us, I think. Yeah, I think it's pretty much the same at PwC. It really depends on where you're currently located. Here in Montreal, in Canada, when I started at PwC, they signed all the clients here in Montreal. So I didn't have to travel a lot. And I was sad about that because I wanted to travel more. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel that uh, when they sign clients in other parts of Canada, in the US, uh, they can send you sometimes. But all the trainings are international. So we would go to the US, to Europe. So that part was good. That's cool. I was stuck in the UK for my training. I wish we flew to another country. <laughs> <laughs> So the next category that we got was to do with work-life balance. And this is the assumption that I got from some of my um, followers over Instagram. One of them was that, you know, PwC had zero work, like work-life balance and they're working like over 80 hours a week. Is that true? It's crazy that you say that because it's not my experience at all, okay? So people in audit, like in accounting, I can understand. They work crazy hours, 80 hours, I don't know, 90 hours, and they're always at the client's side and they never leave. Okay, so that's true for them. Now in consulting, don't forget that I'm in IT consulting. It's a bit different from management consulting, but it's kind of similar too. At PwC, in consulting, when I started, I was working, I don't know, 30, 35 hours, sometimes less, sometimes more. It really depended on the project I was in. And even I was new, so I was still in training. So I was just shadowing people here and there. So it was pretty chill. Like all my other like friends at other firms, they were like, are you even working? I'm like, yeah, but we have no projects, you know? So you're really dependent on projects they give you because I told you we don't choose our projects, they give it to you. At first, like in my first year and a half, I was working like pretty chill hours. Um, I don't know like where your followers are getting those information, but, <laughs> but even in management <laughs> consulting, even in management consulting, they work normal hours. I think PwC here in Montreal, and they really say it a lot, uh, they say that they value work-life balance and they really want you to have a life outside of work. And so they'll do everything they can to help you with that. They even tell you, like when they send you an email on a Saturday, they even tell you like, hey, you don't have to respond now. Just get back to me like on Monday. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's the same for Deloitte. And actually, you know, people actually add at the end of the emails, like, you know, if this email comes to you outside of your working hours, please do not feel pressure to reply back to me. And I think it's so nice. And um, I'm really liking to see that change across all of consulting. Cause I do think that, you know, you're not expected to seep into your weekends unless you really need to. So yeah. that's how it is at Deloitte. If you do work a little bit later, sometimes you can even get your time back in Louis. So it can yeah. be like eight hours you did over the weekend. You can get eight hours back as another extra day of holiday. It's funny you say that because a year ago, I was in a project at PwC and a client was going live on Thursday and they had a bunch of issues on Wednesday night. And I stayed until like 2 a.m. working on, on those issues. And then my manager just told me, hey, just take the day off after the, the, the next day, you know? So I was really glad that my manager did that. But it's funny that you say it's the same at Deloitte because here in Montreal, when I meet Deloitte consultants, they all say like, hey, we have to bill 40 hours every week. And so if you need to do administrative work, you have to do it in your own time. So you end up like working crazy hours. So I don't know if it's different in the UK, maybe like in Europe in general, you're pretty chill people. We are chill in Europe, <laughs> come over. <laughs> 
I don't know how it is at PwC, but actually we have to bill 40 hours typically to our client. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, you know, eight hours every day. Um, you don't bill anything to an admin code. So you have to try and squeeze that admin work in your client time. And that could be when you're waiting for work to be reviewed by a manager, for instance. But let's say you're working crazy hours or you just haven't managed your time. Then you'd be expected to do that in your own time, like compliance, admin, timesheets, all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. You can, you just need to manage your time and be able to kind of like do it, do it like itty bitty things whilst you're doing client work. So you don't have to work past like 7, 8 p.m. Okay. <laughs> to do admin. No one wants to do that on a Friday. Yeah, okay. Uh, for the ones watching, billing means that the firm will pay you a portion of what they bill the client. So as a consultant, you have to work for the client so that the firm is gaining money, you know, that they're making profit out of you. So if you just work your regular work, the firm will just pay you from their own pockets and they don't want that. That's why you have to bill the client as much as possible so that your firm, like Deloitte or PwC, benefit from that. That's why we, I just said, like you have to bill 40 hours, like the maximum to the client. <laughs> yeah. I have heard, and one, another assumption that's come through is a really positive thing actually compared to some of the stuff we've just gone through. For once. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for once. <laughs> Apparently, PwC is a great starting point for your career. You know, there's amazing training opportunities and it's quite easy to get promoted. Do you mind telling us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so definitely you're totally right. In my experience, PwC is a great firm where you can start your career just because they have hierarchies in place, they have training in place, they have the technology, they have the money also to train you so when you start they literally take you as a baby and they try to make you as a consultant so they will send you everywhere for training they will give you opportunities they will give you events to meet other people so i really like that about pwc now do you get promoted easily i don't think so because they have like strict regulations you have to work 18 months and 42 days and five hours wow. to get promoted you know and uh, <laughs> yeah Tough. It, you're not promoted based on skills that's what i find sad a little bit you're promoted by it based yeah, on like yeah. regulations and Time. rules like, like that that. But aside from that, yeah. all the rest, I think that as a new graduate, it's the one of the best firms to start your career at just because of all the training and the skills that you can gain very, very fast. Like because of the, the skills I got from PwC, I was able to get promoted in another firm and have more responsibilities and be in a higher rank, you know? So it, all of that thanks to PwC and the people there. But hey, not as good as Deloitte, right? <laughs> not as good as Deloitte. <laughs> But from my experience or and from what I hear about Deloitte, Deloitte invests a lot uh, in their employees and they even like send you at like events, conferences, just so that you learn new skills and that you grow in your career yeah. because they know that if you they invest in their employees, if they learn new skills in those conferences, they can just bring back those skills at the firm. Is that true? 100%, 100%. And typically what happens is that if you want to go to a conference, you have to put through a business case mm-hmm. and it might be, let's say, a 400 pound conference or whatever it is. And when you come back, actually, you need to share that knowledge that you gained with the rest of the unit that you're in or, you know, to Deloitte in some way. And it might be through a lunch and learn, it might be through an article, but we do do really have this policy not it's not like a written policy but it, we do have this um, you know community which shares like things that we've learned so i mean every week you'll find a course or a, a lunch and learn where people are just sharing their knowledge or sharing something about you know what they've done with their clients so that everyone in deloitte can hear from that and learn from that as well so no it's an amazing community where we can just all learn and upskill and that's why i've, I've really enjoyed you know working there so far that's one thing that i really love about deloitte uh because i we, we don't have that really at pwc like every time like i meet the uh Deloitte consultant they say like hey I was at the the business conference of Montreal I didn't see you why not I was like yeah because PwC didn't say this <laughs> it's a bit different from that perspective but uh, yeah that's one thing I really like about Deloitte well you can always come over to Deloitte if you want to <laughs> yeah that's we, true you know always open <laughs> that's true I, I hope they'll hire me after this video so <laughs> Hey, Deloitte, if you're listening, yep, look, me the up. <laughs> thanks, thanks. So I think we answered most of the assumptions we got from Instagram, right? Thank you everyone for sending across all your assumptions. They have been actually very juicy, some of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for uh, submitting those assumptions. Don't forget to follow Kajol. I will put the uh, Instagram uh, of Kajol here in, on screen. I don't really use Instagram, so I, don't, I won't put it. But you can follow us on LinkedIn too. So guys, if you're interested in management consulting and breaking into consulting more specifically, 
specifically, you should follow and subscribe to Casual Management Consultant on YouTube. She releases video every week and they're pretty neat and tons of value you can learn from it. I'll put the channel here and I'll put it in the description. So go follow her. Thanks so much, Casual, for being on the channel. Uh, and yeah, we'll definitely do another videos. If you guys have suggestions, put them in the comments. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. You know, it's been a pleasure. Thank you everyone for listening to us. And you know, make sure you choose Deloitte over PwC. <laughs> <laughs> That's the conclusion. <laughs> All right, guys. I will we'll talk to you in the next video. Ciao.